Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So in this session, we'll take a look at case statement in SQL Server. So to understand why we might want to use case expression, we have a very specific scenario here. So we'll take a look at this case statement in a moment. But first, let's see the data. And we will retrieve the first name, last name and a field called person type from our table. So let's query our data. So we see that we have the first name, we have last name and they are perfectly readable because they are people's name. But in the person type field, we have abbreviation. So if we use distinct of this person type, so let's so select distinct person type from person dot person table. So if we query distinct person type from our person table, then you can see we have person type I, N, E, M, S, P, S, C, B, C, and G, C. So unless you are the person who has actually entered the data and you completely understand what those values mean. So most people looking at these result set are not going to know what EM stands for or what these abbreviation are for. So again, when you're querying your data, chances are you're giving that information to someone and you're going to generate a report or an output of some form to give to somebody who's asking for it. And they need to see this information. So we need to make it as user friendly and readable as possible. So how we can again control the output of what we are getting from the database and we can say the table and display something different in our result set is through the use of manipulation of the values. So we are going to look at this thing called a case statement. So in this case, we are going to expand those abbreviations. So we have SC here, which will expand to store contact. Then, then we have IN, which is individual customer. So let's write the query here. So I'll go back to the whole data first. So let's copy this code. Okay, so instead of person type, so we need to expand those values. So we will write case and we are applying this case on person type. So when it is SC then what we need we need store contact so we'll write store contact so let's go to that distinct person type from person dot person when it is i n then what we need individual customer so individual customer when it is e m then we need employee And then when it is SP, then salesperson. When it is when it is VC, then vendor contact. And then when it is GC, then what we need? We need general contact. S 
toes. Unknown person type. And is contacted. Okay. So what we are doing here? So now as you can see, the expanded form is more readable and it makes more sense to somebody who does not understand the underlying data within the table itself. But let's analyze the case statement for a minute to see the individual components and then we will run this query and see what the results look like. So the case statement is a part of our select statement. So within the select statement we have first name, we have last name and we also wanted to select person type. So just like we did in the first query here, we still want that person type in our select statement. But instead, what we want to do is we want to act on that person type attribute and we are going to act on it through the use of case statement. So before the person type attribute, we will put case and what we are telling the query engine now is to say when you go in and return the values for person type and when you find SC, then I need store context. In other words, when you find SC, then output store context. When you find IN, then output individual customer. And that's what the when then keywords are responsible for. So we also have this else keyword here. So this is what known as a default case. Some people call it a fall through case. And basically what that means is that if we haven't matched any condition in any of the, these when clause, we will hit an else clause. And it's always a good idea to put an else clause in there. So this is a fail safe, it catches all and that if we did run into something, who knows what else that's uh, in the database that we might not have thought of for an abbreviation. So we can then output unknown person type and that kind of makes sense from this perspective or in the context of this data. So that's what the else clause is designed for. So the, that keyword says if nothing else matches up here, then do this. Okay. So we signal to transact SQL that we are finished with the case statement through the use of the end keyword. And then of course, typically with our select statement, we can do a column alias. So using S keyword. So in this case, we are going to call it contact type. Okay. And then we continue with our from as we normally do. So let's go ahead and highlight this and run this query. So again, we have first name and we have last name, but now under contact type, we see the expanded version, employee, store contact, general contact and all. So this is a much more user readable output value as opposed to these individual abbreviation. So that's just a really good scenario and a really good case study of how to work with this case statement within the SQL server. So hope you have enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching.